Hi, I'm Matt. I'm one of the hosts of Mud and Blood, a podcast dark and grim. And I'm here back for another visual review, this time of two titles, Trail of Cthulhu and Fall of Delta Green. Both of these are Cthulhu Mythos games um, made by Pelgrain Press, and they use the gumshoe system. Now, before I get launched into it, um, I need to give my usual caveat, um, which is basically that this is not a full review of these games. If you're new to our channel, um, or you've somehow found this link looking for a full review of, of either of these games, um, I'm going to have to refer you to our full audio review, which is mbcast.co forward slash 58. Um, because we've done a full audio review of both of these games, um, which is over two hours long. We go into everything. We go into mechanics, setting, the visuals, etc. We give it a rating, um, the two of us, and then we take it like an average of each of the games as well. Um, the reason for this visual review is that one of the categories we, we rate a game on are visuals. And obviously in an audio-only format, it's very difficult to um, show our listeners exactly what we mean when we're talking about artwork or layout, those sorts of things. Um, so we've started doing these visual reviews for all of our reviews um, just to basically be an accompaniment to, um, yeah, to the full review. So that out of the way, um, apologies if you've come here looking for a full review, but again, you can find ours over at um, mbcast.co forward slash 58. Okay, so um, this this review, like all the other visual reviews I've, I've done, will be broken up into two parts. The first part, me sitting here, I'll show you what the books look like um, from where I'm sitting, like covers, etc. Uh, then I'll move over to my desk and I'll open it up and show you the um, the actual spreads. Um, talk about the layout and artwork in a bit more detail. So um, let's start with looking at them one by one. Um, I guess the first thing to talk about actually is size. Um, they're exactly the same size in terms of um, form factor. Obviously one's a little bit thicker than the other. Um, they are both letter books, as you can maybe tell by looking at this, although you kind of need to know how big my head was to, to know that for sure. Um, letter format, for those of you who don't know, is eight and a half by 11 inches, or in metric, I just got to check my notes, uh, 21 and a half by 28 centimeters. Um, in terms of page count, Trail of Cthulhu is 248 pages, and Fall of Delta Green is beefier, 368 pages. So they've managed to squeeze an extra 120 pages into Fall of Delta Green. Um, Fall of Delta Green, by the way, is, is very new. It's only been out for about a year, I think. I think it came out in 2018. Let me just check that, because I didn't look that up before. Yeah, 2018. Whereas Trail of Cthulhu, I think, is 10 years older than that. I think it came out around 2006, 2007. 2008 is in the, um, is in the, on the credits page. Um, so just a couple of things about the covers. As you might be able to see here, if I kind of do that with it, um, they have glossy covers, as you can see. The bindings, as you'd expect from any professional quality um, tabletop role-playing game that has a hardback, um, has an over -sewn binding, which I'm not sure you can see there very well, but... Um, yeah, no complaints there. They both actually lie flat on the table relatively well. Fall of Delta Green lays a little bit better in terms of how flat it lays. Uh, there's Fall of Delta Green, by the way, if you want to see the cover. Um, it's got basically what looks like a stylized photograph of a tentacle taking down a helicopter, which is an event in Fall of Delta Green lore. The back has some blurbs about the book in this kind of... Um, uh, the style of memos or handwritten notes, that sort of thing. And that continues through the rest of the book, as we'll see in a minute. Trail of Cthulhu has a um, a drawing, or sorry, an illustration, a piece of art of an investigator looking into the water. It looks like a dead body as there's a tentacle kind of swimming away. Um, I quite like this, this cover, actually. Um, I like both the covers, to be fair. Um, and on the back, there's a different illustration of... An, of it looks like an investigator standing at the bottom of some stairs going to some... Um, kind of ancient uh, temple or building of some description. Obviously, nothing bad will happen when he goes in there. Um, that's about it. There are no ribbons in either of these books. Um, so just something to point out. And that is really all I've got to say about both of these books from the outside. So um, let's head over to the desk to look at them in more detail. OK, so here they are on my desk. Um, I'll be looking at these one at a time. So to start off with, we're going to look at Trail of Cthulhu. Just move Fall of Delta Green off the table here. And really, this is just a snapshot of what the game looks like in terms of, of you know visual elements. So first thing to look at are the end papers. They have the same end papers on the front and the back, which are the purist and the pulp modes of play that you can play in this game, these two symbols. 
Um, they show up throughout the book. In fact, if you look at the table of contents, it might be hard to see in the video here, but there are these little icons to the side of some of the um, sections in the table of contents. And that really just indicates whether um, some of the contents are only applicable for one style of play. Um, and these ones are actually very specifically calling out, um, you know, the investigator has a lot of these because certain investigator types are only suitable for one type of play. Um, for example, things like the journalist, the professor, police detective, anti antiquarian, etc. Those are all typical purist um, occupations. Um, anyway, so there's uh, that's one kind of cool thing about that. Um, in terms of the rest of the book, we have um, you know contents page here, credits. Oh, sorry, sorry, that was the credits page. These are the contents here. Launching straight into the game. Um, this is probably a good place to start because this this shows a lot of the layout. Specifically, as you can see here, um, it has a three-column layout. Um, this is typical of many of Pelgrane Press's um, books in letter format. Not all of them, actually, but um, but many of them follow this format. Um, you can see, maybe you might be able to see here that there aren't a lot of things going on in the way of headers. In fact, on this two-page spread, there are only two headers to break up the, the flow of information, although there is also a call-out box here. Um, and one of the things that we discussed in our, re our review are orphan sentences. An orphan sentence is when a sentence um, is not finished by the end of a page, but continues on to the next page. And um, on a two-page spread, it's a little bit easier to do uh, to read these. Um, it gets a little bit more noticeable when you have to turn a page and the um, and the sentence isn't finished before you turn the page. This this one doesn't actually have that, although it is, it does happen other places in this book. Um, the other thing is that the call-out boxes are all of um, very different styles, um, not in terms of how they're laid out. They all follow this sort of Art Deco box design. Um, however, some of them are covering two columns, some of them are only in one column, some of them are across three columns, some of them are full page, some of them only go like this one over partial parts of the page. Um, and it does kind of become problematic in some areas. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you one particular page, which is this page here, pages 52 to 53. Um, and in this one, we have a call um, a call out box here called Simple Searches. Then we have a separate one over on the other side called Example Benefits. And we have here an orphaned sentence that goes straight from this page over to this page, but underneath the call out box. You've got to skip this and this to find it. Um, and then it, as it goes on, we also have an orphan sentence which goes on to the other page. Now, again, this sounds very nit nitpicky to a lot of people, I'm, I'm aware. Um, but some of these call-out boxes, especially when there are lots of them, do actually break up the text in a way that is hard to follow. Um, so it's just something I wanted to mention. We did actually call out this two-page spread in our review, which is why I'm showing it here specifically. Um, that accompanied by the fact that there are um, there's a lot of text on the page with, in a lot of places, not a lot of headers. In, th in the front, there's a lot more headers because we have things like um, uh, the investigators, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, anyway, just something I wanted to point out, um, or that we've called out in the interview as well. So what else can we talk about? We can talk about the artwork a little bit. Um, the artwork is all done by the same artist. If I flip to the contents page, um, you can see here that the artist is um, Jerome Huguenin. <laughs> Apologies for getting that name wrong. Um, he's also done the um, the layout and the art in this, in this book. Now, we really like the art. I think the art is, has been really well done. It's a mixture of... Um, Looks like some actual photographs that have been touched up, as well as some pieces of art that kind of resemble um, photographs. And um, generally speaking, they're very high quality. Really like it. Really like that it's the same saw going throughout. Um, I do think they should have used a different layout person um, because I think the layout is a little bit rough around the edges. Um, but yeah. Anyway, some other small things to point out. Things like the um, the headers at the top, the headers and the footers on the on the book. Um, rather than putting page numbers on the corner, which makes it a little bit easier to flick through, they're in the center, so something to be aware of. Um, same with the chapter headers, they're, um, they're in the center rather than over on the sides. Um, yeah, apart from that, as you can see here, it has this distressed background going on um, throughout the book, which is nice. It doesn't really interrupt with the um, readability at all. Um, yeah, tables. Let me try and find some tables so I can show you what they look like. Here we go. Um, they're generally very easy to read. Um, often it's nice to see tables that have alternating rows with different um, different colors, like a shaded, a slightly shaded gray um, alternate row, etc. 
However, um, the font is big enough and the spacing on these tables is big enough that they're very, very easy to read regardless. So um, no, no real issues there with that. Um, they fit in with the style quite well in that the, the borders of the tables match the coloring of the, of the, table, um, the table borders. So yeah, that's what the tables look like. So um, I guess the only other thing to point out here Got a case summary here from one of the, this is a handout from one of the, um, from the adventure that comes in the back of the book. It's a nice map there as well, which I quite like, um, of Cleveland. You get some appendices at the back here, which have some recaps of, um, well, it basically has how to um, convert BRP or Call of Cthulhu to gumshoe. So especially if you're trying to run some Call of Cthulhu adventures or scenarios. Um, and then it has an appendix on sources and resources where it really talks about um, authors and fiction um, and nonfiction, of course. Okay, then there's a, a link to useful documents to their website where you can find a bunch of other things. Then we get some tables at the back here. Sorry, some doc, um, <laughs> tables. We get some, we get a character sheet. We get this keeper's investigator matrix. Um, we get an investigative ability checklist, and then we get the campaign frame notes, which are quite useful in setting up a campaign, and uh, GM's table reference, which is kind of like a mini GM screen in terms of tables, useful tables to pull out. It's worth noting that they are a little bit hard to read, especially this one, Physical Injury and Death. Rather than being like a flowchart or something, it is very dense, um, text heavy, and a little bit hard to read if you're trying to reference that at the table, which is what it says here, and table reference. Um, the contributors, it's kind of cool to see these um, pictures of them all in straight jackets. Um, yeah, it kind of ties in with the uh, ties in with the theme of the book. Then we have the indices, um, and we have, yeah, one which is alien races, beasts and monsters, gods and titans, and spells broken up, and then the normal one with all the general topics that you would expect to see, which covers, as you can see there, five and five pages in an extra column. And then we get a full page picture of, I would guess that's Cthulhu because there's tentacles hanging off his face um, on the back cover there. So that is Trail of Cthulhu in a nutshell. Okay, so here's Fall of Delta Green. Um, just open it up very quickly. The first thing to note is that it's got a different um, style of, of um, end papers. This one has maps of the world. Uh, it's the same map on the front and the back, but the kind of cool thing about it, as you can possibly just see down here, but not maybe read the detail, it has a special location key. And this has um, basically calls out places within the map that are applicable to the setting of um, Delta Fall of Delta Green. So you have, um, these are deep ones, uh, I guess sites of deep one um, habitats or whatever you would call them. Um, Hastur, there are marks where I guess um, Hastur has been active or agents of Hastur have been active. Um, I can't actually see any on the map. There's one over here in uh, New England, which I guess is near Arkham. And it's the only one I can actually see just at a glance on the map. Um, anyway, UFO activity is also on here. Um, Niala Tohep, uh, Niala Totep is also um, has an icon to mark denote things on the map here. You can see one in Egypt as you'd expect, um, etc. We then turn the page and um, you can see that already the the visual design, the layout is quite different to call uh, Trail of Cthulhu. Apologies. Um, we start off with a um, a little kind of um, thanks page, not really credits page, followed by um, a kind of a title page, credits page, contents. And one thing to note about the, the contents page is that the um, the interior art is by quite a few people. It looks like about a dozen people. Um, the design and layout is done by a specific, um, also somebody who's one of the interior artists, but they have a different um, design and layout person from, from uh, Trail of Cthulhu. So already um, you could kind of ex maybe expect that the layout will be a little bit... Um, a little bit better than in Trail of Cthulhu. Um, and in fact, that is what we, we generally have tended to find when we've reviewed the book. Um, the actual contents go on for several pages, as you can see here. We've got um, two, four, six, seven full pages of contents where it breaks it really breaks it down into a lot of detail, um, which is quite nice to see. Um, then we have the the chapters. Now, all the chapters have this two-page spread, uh, which, which we both really liked. Um, we have some artwork that mainly covers the left-hand page. Um, the artwork, by the way, through this book tends to mainly be photographs or kind of digitally enhanced photographs, although there are some illustrations peppered throughout. And I'll show you some of the illustrations to show the, to show the detail um, or the quality. Um, and generally speaking, we both are really big fans of the photographs, um, and I think the illustrations kind of stand out a little bit because they, they're so different to the, to the photographs. But um, 
yeah, we have like a little quote. I think most of them are from an HP Lovecraft passage, and then we get a little bit about the, um, you know, what the chapter's about. Now, this is not a great place to start because this is not the layout of the rest of the book. This has a, a single column, as you can see, layout, where the, the text is all in a single layout. Um, here we have a kind of narrow column with a, with a kind of callout box in it, but still more or less falls um, in line with a single column layout. But once we get into this, the, the second chapter, we see the three column layout coming back and this follows through the rest of the book. Um, the nice thing about this is that, as you can see, as I'm just flicking through these first pages, is that the layout is, is very different to Trail of Cthulhu. It's not uniform, it's not exactly the same on every page. Um, the callout boxes all look a bit different. Um, here's some white in, in column callout boxes. This one has like a burnt edge on the bottom, this one doesn't. Um, you can see these uh, looks like kind of browning um, memo paper for some of the callout boxes. This one even has a different um, kind of header border type thing at the top. Um, you also will see some callout boxes which are, if you treat them as callout boxes, it's kind of like artwork, but some memos that are kind of been inserted in um, various places. But mainly the callout boxes tend to follow this format of um, either being like a piece of memo, um, a sheet of memo paper, or this sort of white, um, this sort of white column of text that's inside the uh, inside the column layout. Um, yeah, so the layout. I mean, as you can see here, it's a different. It's got different backgrounds on almost every single page, which is really nice to see. This one's got like red blood smears or kind of orangish blood smears on the bottom. This one's a bit bluish. This one's got like a jungle motif. This one's got like a blue smoke, which is different to this other blue one I just I just showed you. Um, yeah. It's quite nice. It's quite nice that it's broken up like that. This one has almost nothing. Um, like some of these don't have, and this one has like a, a tentacle creature at the bottom there, like maybe a Shoggoth or something. Um, yeah, and the artwork is kind of peppered throughout there, as you can see. Really, there's a lot of, you could consider a lot of the layout just um, artwork. This like top secret bit here, the, the background elements, some of the creeping like memos coming up at the top of the page. It's it's quite evocative. It's, it's quite nice. We, we do quite like that. Um, it does suffer some, from some of the problems of uh, Trail of Cthulhu in that, um, well, the three column, the three column spread is a little bit hard to read. It feels like there are fewer um, orphaned sentences compared to Trail of Cthulhu. Um, in fact, I didn't really look for any before I did this. Here's one here um, where it says, to a win, where you risk fewer talon, uh, talon wounds. So we do have some orphan sentences where they carry over, not just within the spread, but over to where you have to turn a page, which is a minor thing, really. Um, I think, generally speaking, the headers in this one are, there's a lot more headers. It's a little bit easier to read because of that. Also, it feels like maybe the margins between the columns or possibly even the font is bigger, so it's just a little bit easier to read in general. Um, so that's really all I want to talk about with layout. Oh, one other thing, sorry, that's not quite the case. Um, as you can see, page numbers are still in the center here, but they have moved the, the chapter headers over to the, over to the edge, which makes it a little bit easier to flick through and find your section. As you can see here, there are also different colors, which also makes it a little bit easier to find the next section. Um, yeah. Artwork then. Here's one of the illustrations I mentioned I was talking about. Um, that one's okay. I would I would say um, this one also okay. But there are some, I'm just trying to try quickly find one, um, that really stand out for being uh, not super great. This is one of them here. It's kind of hard to maybe tell the detail from there. I'll try and find another one because there's another one that really jumps out. It would be good if I bookmark this in advance. This isn't the same one, but it's it kind of follows, follows I think it's probably from the same artist. It's very, very obviously a, a digital image, and it's got a quite a kind of colorful and almost cartoony feel to it. Um, it kind of looks a bit like something you'd find on DeviantArt, if, if I can say that without insulting anyone. Um, but it really does kind of stand out from the the quite good touched up um, photographs or just straight up photographs that you see in the rest of the book. Things like this picture of a soldier firing his rifle um, next to two other soldiers. But as you can see, it's like their their eyes have been censored to kind of redact their um, their identities, which just adds to the flavor. That's just great. I really love this. It, it kind of makes you feel like this is you're looking at, you know, um, historical historical stuff. It really puts the fall of Delta Green into perspective, and I really like that. And it, it does unfortunately mean that when you come across these illustrations, they, they do jump out. Um, so yeah, just something just something to think about there. Um, if I go then to the back of the book, 
the back of the book here, we have um, what's called Backmatcher, where it talks about, again, it's got conversion notes for um, Call of Cthulhu. Um, sources, where it's um, kind of talking about short stories, uh, where you can look for things about the 60s to get into the, to get into the era, things like television shows, fiction, films, etc. Um, his, historical sources of information to get from various things. Um, yeah, where to go to look for information about the kind of what it says the shadows which is basically like conspiracy type of stuff um recommended here is uh the film jfk by oliver stone um yeah that sort of thing then we get the uh the sheets we got a character sheet there we have or what's called an agent sheet or agent record sheet i think agent record sheet which is a two-page sheet we have this uh, handler's agent tracking sheet again uh, two pages then we get some tables like we had in um in trail of cthulhu and combat option summary. So this is all the options you can do during combat. This is quite a combat heavy game compared to Trail of Cthulhu. Um, yeah, and then Kickstarter backers because this was a Kickstarter stretch, stretch goal. And then the appendices. And the appendices cover one, two, th so three, five, seven, nine, ten pages, which is quite quite a lot really. Yeah, so that is, um, that is Trail of Cthulhu in a nutshell. The only other thing I wanted to show is there are some um, handy flow charts for combat. Which you don't have in um, you don't have any of the flowcharts in Trail of Cthulhu, but uh, they're quite useful to have here because um, combat and this is actually about stability, but um, stability is handled differently than in Tra Trail of Cthulhu. But combat and stability um, have these um, have these flowcharts. So that's Fall of Delta Green, and that is it for our kind of Gumshoe Cthulhu uh, visual review. Thanks for watching. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks and catch you next time.